Hello and welcome to the Source One podcast, your online or on the go source for the latest insights in the procurement, supply management, and strategic sourcing industry. Today's guests are Nick Lazara and Caitlin Krigbaum, executive search consultants for MRA Global and the Seams colleagues. Caitlin, Nick, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Thanks. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Uh, so last time on our program, we spoke to your colleague, Nassim, about who Source One is, who MRA Global is, and how the supply management profession has evolved. So today I'd like to talk about the job market for 2014 and how it has changed or not changed for 2015. So I'll start with um, I'll start with this. If, if you think about the candidates who were most successful in getting placed in 2014, what qualities did they have that made them stand out from the competition? Hmm. Well, I'd hate to state the obvious, Ken, but successful people work hard. Uh, they're very self-reliant, and I think that they're constantly looking to improve themselves uh, and the organization. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the other thing that, that really sticks out to me, Ken, is having good foresight, right? So top candidates know what they want in a leader in a company. They have a plan for their career. Plus, individually, they know what they brought to the table and were able to articulate that. So, um, you know, knowing how to advance your career the right, right way and being decisive is also uh, one of the things that we saw in some of the top candidates who, who we placed last year. I think that makes perfect sense. Um, going into 2015 then, what things from, from the job market or from, from how candidates were as a whole, what things did you want to carry over from 2014 into 2015? Uh, that's a good question. I'd say not only for for the market to stay strong, which it, it clearly has, but also, you know, to continue continue seeing uh, growth in the strategic role of procurement within organizations. I think that um, companies have integrated procurement into their management strategies, and that's leading to a lot of success. We've seen that as well. Um, certainly that's been the evolution of the procurement function and, and why more and more companies have turned to our company and to your company um, for support. So we talked about what we wanted to carry over. So what things did you want to stay in 2014 and never see the light of day again? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. Well, you know, clients that vacillate is, is one of them. Um, you know, we do see a lot of companies we work with that don't have a strong internal process or, or a commitment to hire. Um, you know, obviously uh, on our front, we're going to put forth the resources if we have commitment, you know, from the other side that um, they really do need this person, that it is as urgent as, uh, as um, they let on to be. And also on the other side, right, when working with candidates, if they aren't serious or, or just window shopping, right, we need uh, commitment essentially from, from both ends and uh, had a little bit of issues there in 2014 and hopefully, uh, you know, that won't continue on as this year progresses. Well, uh, I have to imagine that you're going to continue to hold that torch. I mean, we had the same desire going into 2015 because it's, as you said, there's an element of, of window shopping or you might be talking to someone who is ready to make a commitment, but they have to um, field it with their own stakeholders and get the buy-in. It's not just one person often who can sign off on something. So for us, that stakeholder engagement is, is a critical, ongoing, continuous activity. We're never done trying to engage stakeholders. And as consultants, um, I'm sure you you guys feel the same way. We're not just trying to win the business, get paid, and get out. We're trying to build long-term strategic partnerships that help our clients be better managers. Um, so what sort of strategies do you employ at MRA Global to help your clients overcome those limitations that you mentioned? Right. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, some of the, the ways that we um, negate that is, you know, setting clear expectations up front, whether it's the volume of, of candidates we'll send over, the timing, number of steps um, in the interview process, um, re reoccurring calls where we can go over the status of the search, progress, if there's any um, challenges we're seeing out there, uh, debriefing with our clients after each interview to ensure we're aligned and, and recalibrate moving forward. And the big thing is transparency, uh, which, as you know, is key, right? So updating them as changes occur if a candidate has an offer for example, and we need to expedite the process, letting them know so there's no, uh, they're not blindsided, and expecting the same from their end. Um, you know, if, if something slows the process internally, candidates can feel unwanted, so making sure that we um, are keeping, keeping them in the loop. 
For sure. Yeah, all great points. Um, so we talked a little bit about uh, this with Nassim the other day, but let's step back to the beginning of 2015. Um, as the new year began, how did the market look? Um, let's start. Were companies hiring? Uh, to answer briefly, yes. <laughs> uh, companies are hiring. Companies are, are still hiring. And the market you know, was very strong, as, as Nassim had mentioned, in 2014 and, and beginning of this year, carried over as well. And candidates were looking as well? Yeah, can I say there was definitely an influx of incoming candidates through through various channels, right? And so, of course, there's always going to be a consistent number of available candidates, but it seems there's even an increase in the amount of passive talent or people who are gainfully employed uh, and not actively looking um, that are also open to exploring their options. Hmm. Oh, well, those passive candidates or or the ones that might stand out? Are, were there any particular industries or categories where they were more likely to find jobs? Yeah, you know, one of the ones that sticks out to us, especially, you know, the beginning of this year is consumer goods. Um, a lot of growth across the board industry-wise, but that's a key one, is a lot of companies are transforming their sourcing groups into more centralized or center-led models rather than segmented off by brand and uh, Category-wise, I think, yes, there's an abundance of opportunities we're seeing on the indirect side, particularly within professional services, so consulting, HR, legal. Uh, these are uh, these are the key ones that we're seeing growth within. Yeah, we've, we've had some experience at Source One, um, particularly on the topic of centralizing the operations or developing core standardized processes that transcend brand and, and function barriers. Um, that's the kind of paradigm shift that we work to affect, um, and we've worked to affect over our history. And it, it seems to us that today's market demands it as a solution. So it's not just something you can consider as an option, but it's actually something you need to do to stay competitive. Is is, is that your impression as well? You know, it, it is. Um, depending on company types and where they're at in their evolution, we're seeing centralizing taking place across the board, actually, with multiple functions. However, Interesting enough, we're seeing uh, organizations also that are moving towards decentralization. So it's not quite a one-size-fits-all solution. In, in fact, one of our bigger CPG clients, Ken, decided to split their company in half. So that created for an interesting dynamic, you know, both internally and externally. And another company, a med device client of ours, is amidst a large merger. So that's kind of a, a positive disruption that presents many challenges across the operational spectrum, including our world of uh, talent acquisition and management. I think you hit the nail on the head then. You know, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Um, you know, the expression, your mileage may vary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I spoke with Nassim, he talked about how the market is continuing to, to grow. And um, according to the Wall Street Journal, recently published that there are 5.4 million job openings. And that's the highest it's been since about 2000. Um, the takeaway being that there doesn't seem to be a sign that things are slowing down. Um, but it, it makes me wonder, why are jobs available? Is, is there a lack of qualified talent and so people are just not getting hired? Or are the demands of the work too much for those who are hired and so they don't last long? What's been your experience? You know, in our experience, Ken, uh, newly created positions continue to be the, the main reason for job openings. So that's really signifying that a lot of employers, as mentioned, are focusing on expanding their businesses. Absolutely. You know, and just to piggyback off that, I, I agree with Nick, and I'd say the, the second most common reason for job openings would be resignation. So, you know, top candidates are still being recruited out of existing roles and into new companies because of these businesses expanding. Yeah, you know, the search process is, is still taking way too long considering the recession has been behind us for several years and the fact that it's a candidate-driven market in many industries, uh, you know, many companies are too slow to pull the trigger, which provides candidates with the time to investigate uh, other opportunities. Ken, well, well, why does it take so long? Another great question. <laughs> you know, a common problem here is uh, is lack of decision making and requiring that everyone be involved internally. So uh, we see a lot of times that there's this sense of being scared to be the one to say yes for the hire. Um, you know, in, in the event that it doesn't work out, uh, maybe there's a fear of, of looking foolish, something along those lines. But that's that's a common issue we've seen with our clients. Hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds to me like there's maybe a, a, 
um, a twofold premise. The, the first is that there is a growing market um, for sourcing professionals. Um, that is strategic sourcing, supply chain, and procurement uh, as more and more companies are expanding their business, as you mentioned. Um, the second part is that the market is naturally going to be more competitive. Companies are going to have higher expectations for the knowledge, skills, and abilities for those roles. That's something the team spoke about. Um, and that creates more openings downstream. Um, is, that, is that accurate? Yeah, you know, I'd say that is an accurate observation, Ken. As we witness growth across the board with our clients, I'd say some of the more progressive companies understand that, you know, they need to upgrade their table with candidates possessing advanced skills, which ultimately delivers value to the bottom line. And as we probably previously alluded to, this is actually a byproduct of the recognition procurement is gaining, you know, the function and, and kind of having a seat at the table. Next time on the Supply Management Recruiting Series, we'll talk to Caitlin and Nick, Nick about how candidates and companies are navigating the market. Thanks for tuning in to the Source One podcast. Remember to visit us at sourceoneinc.com and read our blog at strategicsorcerer.com. Want to provide some feedback? Got an idea for a topic we should cover? Let us know by emailing PRRequest at sourceoneinc.com. Thanks for listening.